It's not often that a Mario game releases to bad reviews. In fact, it almost never happens with the core Super Mario series. And even the Mario spin-off games are typically well received. This one's an exception. When it hit the GBA in 2004, the reviews were negative, abnormally negative for a Mario game. And you know something? They were right. Plumber or no plumber, this is not a very good game. Mario Pinball Land starts with a pretty ridiculous premise. Princess has been kidnapped, again, in that old pink dress, which always looks good, let's be honest. Peach is usually pretty balling. Only this time, she takes that a bit more literally. You know, it's not that Mario spin-offs need to make sense or anything, but this whole concept feels really forced. I mean, Kirby and Metroid, those franchises are natural fits for pinball games. Mario's a different story. This, this feels ridiculous, and not in a good way. Nonetheless, it's still got that Mario polish. This is a gorgeous GBA game, and the presentation's spot on, as you might expect. What you might not expect is that it plays like Goomba Poop. And actually, the main culprit here is the design of the tables. I mean, a, a real pinball table is kind of a guided experience. There are tubes and rails and bumpers and lots of things. And those things define the game, right? Otherwise, it's just balls flying all over the place. That sounds awful. No, no one wants balls flying all over the place. But that's what Mario Pinball Land is. Balls flying all over the... Place. <laughs> See, most of the tables in this game are just I mean they're not they're not even tables at all. They're just open. That means there's nothing to guide the ball, nothing to guide the experience. Nothing to slow things down. And of course, since it's a handheld game, your space is limited. So you have these chaotic tables that play too fast and have no character, as well as pinballs that are incredibly frustrating to control. Humble! So, uh, I mean, th th this is just not how you design pinball tables. The gameplay doesn't help matters. Do you know the worst part? Mario Pinball Land is like legit cheap. See, the game takes inspiration from Mario 64, so it's all based on stars and doors. You need a certain amount of stars to open doors, which then take you to new tables in the same level. A good idea, but mangled beyond recognition in this game. The problem one is that just getting to those doors is insanely tough. I've never played a game where it was this hard just to get where you need to go. You clear a table, get the star, and spend 10 minutes just trying to leave. It's ridiculous. Problem two is that once you move on, if your ball gets past the paddles, you end up back at the last table. And then the table you just fell from gets reset. So it's just, it's a constant battle to get to the next table and stay there. Let alone actually, you know, play the game. Oh, and if you happen to open all the doors, they all close. If that sounds awful and frustrating and poorly designed, well, that's because Mario Pinball Land is one of the most despicably unfair Nintendo games I've ever played. Now, of course, it wasn't developed by Nintendo. This was a separate team. They would learn from Mario Pinball Land and go on to do Metroid Prime Pinball which was a way better game. You can see brief flashes of that quality here. It has the same production value, similar kind of look, but it doesn't play nearly as well. And it has some seriously flawed table design. I, I'm okay with a bad concept, but Mario Pinball Land is just a bad game. <laughs> 